Welcome to Fontribute, where we talk about fonts and their attributes. Fontribute. So this is Thomas Jockin from Type Thursday. Hope you all are having a great, fantastic week. I'm off to Chicago after this after I'm recording this session. I'm off to Chicago this weekend uh, to do some meetings. I'm looking forward to it, and I wanted to roll through the next production of Fontribute for you guys. So I hope you all enjoy this. So this week I figured I'd challenge us with a genre that I, I, as a type designer, I find it's very challenging, but is worth a discussion about, which is a high contrast sans serif. So let's get started with that. So I brought in two examples I think are interesting directions of that idea. Uh, just for those who don't know, uh, a sans serif, again, when there's no terminals or no mean serif strokes added on. And generally, when you're taught sans serifs are usually low contrast well there's a genre that where the thick thin relationships are treated as if they were a serif design so high contrast in the thick thin relationships this is what we mean by a high contrast sans serif uh, there are unique problems that usually come up with designing a high contrast sans serif and i i'm always interested to see how other type designers approach that design problem from my perspective as well and there's a lot you can learn as well in how different approaches have different effects on how typefaces work and how they feel. So let's get started. I have here two examples, two relatively recent releases that are uh, high contrast sans serifs. One is Vinter from Monochrome, and the other is Granville from Production Type. So I think, and also as a convenience, I put up the kind of penultimate, the most known example of a high contrast sans serif, which is Optima. Uh, maybe you got yelled at in your type 1 class not to use it, but I think it is useful since a lot of people listening may or viewing this may have experience with that. So I put that up here as well as an example. That's for cross-referencing. So let's start discuss, let's start some observations, what we can see. So the main note is, as we notice, that there's a the relationship of the thick to the thin, right? That basically in all three examples, we see a generally much higher emphasis on the stems versus the cross bars in these H's. So that's what we mean by high contrast in this case. These are much thicker, the stems are much thicker than the crossbars. That's what we know. Now, what we can say is, Vinter is much higher contrast in general. Meaning, notice the thickness of this crossbar relative to this stem, and then compare that to Granville, to that stem. This crossbar is heavier, right? Like basically compare this to this, See that relationship versus this? So we can say that Vinter has higher contrast. This one's higher. We can see, observe that. Also a notice that I think for, this is why a lot of typography professors yell at their students for using Optima. Differentiation between the cupping, right? This cupping effect does not exist in either Granville or Vinter. We can also say, notice that Vinter's proportion is much narrower. Or notice the proportion of this H versus both Granville and Optima. Uh, Optima seems to be the most widest of the of the group, but Granville has a relatively wide proportion of its capital H. Meanwhile, Vinter has a much more narrower proportion overall. Okay, on to the C. So I use the C here to discuss a couple of things. One is, okay, how are the rounds being handled? Now, Vinter, notice how condensed its H was. Compare that to how insanely wide this C is. This thing is like basically a perfect circle. It's like, it's not a perfect circle. I can tell that it's wider than taller. Like it's an oval that's much like squatter. It's uh, not a perfect circle. A perfect circle would probably be like, if I were just to guess it, Something like this, like this diameter on the outer curve. It's not a perfect circle, but it's certainly, I mean, it's just wideness is so much wider than Granville, for example. And even Optima too, if you compare that to that as well. Another note to see is, let's, so again, we can see the contrast differences. Notice the difference in contrast of these thin points between the three examples. Granville chooses to, con to basically make it equal relatively equal weight on top and bottom, while Optima and Vinter choose a different approach. They make a decision that, okay, this top stroke is going to be heavier than the bottom stroke. See how, notice how this is so much thicker? 
This top one is th thicker than the thinner part. Also, not nearly as much. It's not as, it's not as apparent, but it's there slightly, very slightly. So there's that difference in approaches of contrast, and also look at the terminals. So Granville chooses to kind of the cut off the terminal. This is also this is what I mean by like the challenges of a of a high contrast sans serif is once you have these these kind of terminals that thin out what do you do with them how are you going to make it in a harmonious relationship that kind of the whole point of serifs are, are kind of the tuck in stuff and kind of make things look neat and orderly uh as a, that's how i always think of serifs as a type designer so when you don't have that you it, it really is very demanding to how you're going to deal with these terminals and the hardest way to handle is the granville style where you just like let the, you let things cut at a 90 degree angle like this and you gotta rely on a very nice transition of curves to make this letter feel comfortable in the shape. The other method that Atma chooses and Venture chooses as well is this kind of flaring. So Atma, this makes sense because you saw that flaring in its stems. So it follows a similar method of kind of a flare out at the terminals of the C top and bottom. Venture as well, there's this flaring out. See how this flares out? And then this itsy bitsy flare on the bottom. And now they take notice that there's again this priority that kind of this top domain has higher priority than the bottom domain in the typeface project. So it's not only thicker on the top 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 of this high contrast area, it terminates in a much bigger terminal of this kind of wedge shape coming out. Also notice this enclosement too. Ultima chooses to be much more open in its treatment than much more than Granville. Granville is going much more for an enclosing shape. Inventor is slowing in between. It's more enclosing than Optima, but not as much as Granville. You can see those di that difference between the two of them, the three of them actually in this case. We can also look, also again notice again I said before the outer curve. Notice how this curve profile over here is handled. It's much more like a like squatted uh, oval. It's like being squished down, right? Imagine it's being squished down, and this oval is like this. Granville is much more. You know, it's profiled as outer curve and the inner curve related to it. It's not as squat, not as wide, right? That's that's a relation of its proportions that make the difference in those curves like that. And again, just to kind of, I wanted to drill one more time the proportion differences. Now I have the E here. I have put next to an H to compare. So Venter really chooses a very, very, very narrow E, like the E and the F. Those kind of letters. It's almost Art Deco in, in, in its solution, basically. Like, if you think like an Art Deco face, it would have treatments like this. Uh, what is interesting is that the H also, it's not as narrow, it's not as narrow as the E, but it's certainly, well, compare that to Granville's, it's much narrower compared to that. So there's no those relationships. And again, the seams we can see, notice the rate of that con weight of these crossbars versus the stems. And you can see that across the E as well. It's being applied in, in the same methodology. Now, the S is always a fun one, the lowercase s. I'll, start, I'll talk about this. So again, as we talk about the, the how the terminal is being handled, again, it's always a... The S is a very complicated shape by itself. And add on to this, this high contrast. Like, these terminals really matter. So that's actually why Granville's attempt to terminate to just a stroke like this. It's very challenging because you got to make this balance and feel like it owns its space in a very comfortable way. And the degree of curve in that spine is probably a lot of the, uh, is a lot of the interplay. To, well, that's what you're dealing with as a type designer. You're, what you're doing is you're using that spine curve. Like how much is the spine arch? Is it like a flat? Is it like a more of a Z shape? Imagine it doesn't really curve that much, right? Or are you going like really crazy with it and kind of like really taking a long time for those curves to move around the space? I find that as a type designer, this is that's the main. You, you kind of use that as a counterweight to how your terminals are handled so that the strokes feel uh, comfortable and they feel stable. The S is very hard to, one of the hardest letters to draw for that reason. And you would have had Serif, you had more to play with the kind of counterbalance. That's what you're doing a lot when you're drawing with S's. So I just want to point out for Granville, it's always a big challenge when you choose not to have terminals. Because notice in Venter or in Optima, in this case, they have these flared out serifs at the end, not terminals, and they're not even serifs, they're terminals that flare out. It helps basically create counterbalances within the main weight area of the, of the spine of these S's 
to help balance it out. One note to take is I'm looking to know three of them. They're all relatively following the same method. Of, the slopes are pretty similar overall. Uh, what is noted and interesting to note is seeing how the weight is moved around within the spines. So Granville chooses to stay thicker or longer. Notice if I put that like kind of this juncture, I just marked to see how does the weight transitioning. Venture is staying thicker longer. And then it gets to kind of the imagine 12 o'clock on a clock. Imagine this is 12 o'clock, right? Versus 9 o'clock on the clock. Take a notice of how the weight is being handled. Part of that might be contrast, obviously, because Venture's a higher contrast face in general. So it has to move much quicker relative to this weight of the spine. At 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock, it has to move faster to get over there versus the lower contrast of Granville and Optima. Uh, it has more time to transition between the two of them. So take that of note. And again, notice the aperture treatments. This is going, Granville's going for that 90, enclosing 90 degree terminals. Optima's trying to go for the optimal openness. Venture's something in between. And again, this is what I mean by the kind of the counterbalancing acts type designers have to handle with their with their projects when they're drawing S's. Okay, on to the F. I like the F in this example because it's no, it's another problem case as a type designer when you're doing a high contrast sans serif. How are you going to handle this? So, Vinter, in a surprising note, chooses not to have any kind of flare terminal. It just tapers out to the bottom. Uh, I think that's interesting. I was a little surprised about that, just considering the other letters, how it chose to how it chose to handle its terminals. Granville chooses two parts. Part one is going to so it sticks to the game plan, terminates to a stroke in a 90 degree angle like this, flat angle. But instead of having the stem stay at the same constant weight and up, there is this hooking effect, basically. You see that this is where to kind of get it. Why this happens, some designers choose this. There are a lot of reasons why you would. Mostly it's for weight, trying to get some weight in. And also just, you, it felt like it's too abrupt of a transition. You couldn't get the right movement if the stem stayed constant. Imagine the stem did not arch in like it did, it just stayed constant. The designer must have felt that that arch created was not enough room. It didn't feel comfortable and right for them. So they thought, figured a solution for that was this very strong cut in of the curve over here. You usually see this in fat faces, like a super fat face, like wool, that has a ball terminal. That's what's surprising about it a little bit, is that usually with a ball terminal, I'm drawing it really quickly to demonstrate, you need to get some white in there so that, you know, like basically imagine this area right here, you need, it, you need to do this extreme arching so that some white can get in there to fill the, to make the letter feel more balanced. If it didn't have that, it'd be too blobby, especially with a terminal. So it's a little surprising that Granville chose this direction too, um, in the F. But I wanted to share that with you guys as an observation. Also notice that both Venture and Granville both choose the opt for the negative side bearing on the right side. This is the advantage of digital typography, digital typefaces and typographies that we don't, we're not limited to like a metal box that has to be uh, so rigid. Like basically everything has to fit within the box. You can let letters go off the box in this case, a metaphorical side bearing in this case. Lastly, let's compare that to Optima. Optima chooses to, okay, go basically almost like a 90 degree cut, which is surprising considering other times it's been slightly angled in its handling, in other letters, but it maintains the weight. And there's actually, if you notice here, there is a slight, so again, it's a similar issue. They want to get an, an, a good transition of curves over here on the transition from the stem over to the terminal. And they felt, and the designer felt that if it moved perfectly straight up, it's not enough time. It wasn't, it wasn't was enough time for that curve to clarify itself really effectively. So the solution instead was to let it pinch in. And notice that Optima is doing it slightly. Granville just uses to go way over the top of that decision, but Optima had that solution too. So that's some of the considerations that typeface designer might think about. And with Optima, that might be appropriate because also just the flaring of the terminal. Right here, you can tell. So it's mimicking it, and it has a real has a resonance within how it operates. You know, also see it here and here, and here and here. Okay, so that's the F. 
the last letter we'll talk about is the E. So this will kind of conclude a lot of the notes we're making. One is just notice the profile of the rounds. Notice the rounds of winter are just super wide and they're not perfect circle wide, right? Like imagine it's not a perfect circle. It's more this like squat ovals that are super wide. It's very interesting proportionally how it handles itself. Compare that to Granville in this case, between these two. Also again, just notice the contrast between the terminals. And also see how the how the contrast is being handled. See how it, it's almost like this like vertical system in the inventor, right? Where it goes super, th it goes thin, then thick, then back to thin at, in this case, six o'clock. Imagine this is a clock, right? So 12 o'clock and six o'clock are super thin. Nine and three are heavy. And then it starts filling in again and as it moves up the clock from six over to three granville if i just do the same process 12 6 9 3 so notice that it's more of a stress angle like yeah it's hard to say exactly it's stress angle but notice it's it basically stays thicker longer right basically moving to six o'clock it's not directly the, the thinnest there it's actually a little bit like over here i would say and then it just tapers out in, by 3 o'clock into this terminal. So just the nature of how its contrast is drawn is different than Venter in this case. Between these two. Okay, so what can we say from all from all these observations? Well, there's a couple of things. One is Venter's just higher contrast and its proportion decisions. It's a, it's all of these, I think, were more on the display side of things, how you would handle it. But beyond even that, just kind of consideration. Just notice the proportion play of Venter. Um, a lot of times you may choose different typefaces because you want different emotions and feelings behind it. Venter's decision to kind of have this just like wideness in how it renders itself gives a certain attitude about it that's so different from the other examples. While Granville, again, it's there's like a certain like mid 20th century feeling about it that's it's trying it's trying to convey, and I find it's achieving it on different on on some levels that basically preparing basically say say venture gets too too vertical in contrast like a little too harsh you want something a little more softer in feeling but the same kind of rationality program happening gravel might make more sense and Othma, you know it is a reflection you can see doing it too it's just it feels so much more delicate and so much more uh not, i think antiquated is not the right word for it i think it's more it's like a there's like a home spoke feel behind it again because of how these terminals are being handled and how its proportions are drawn and the, how its terminals are being handled like its apertures and whatnot i think so in actuality so i think it also might be an example of what other type is you might be pairing with it so granville and Win winter might be very appropriate with sans serifs uh for example mainly because of the closer apertures and the nature of how their contrast is being handled well, Optima might seem like a very reasonable choice to work with a serif typeface, just because of how its proportions are drawn and these other attributes we've been discussing between them. This has been Font Tribute. This is Thomas Chalkin. I hope you all have a great, fantastic week. I'm off to Chicago after this call, after recording this. So wish me luck. I'm going to have a fun old time over there. Hope it doesn't snow. <laughs> and I look forward to talking to all of you next week. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.